Good evening, and welcome to the Wheelwright Museum's virtual opening of our latest exhibition, Chanteau Bouguet, Eyes of the World. It is really great to have all of you with us this evening, and I see lots of familiar faces out there. We hope you will also join us to view this exhibition in person when it opens tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Santa Fe can be beautiful at any time of year, and this week we had some sunny 75 degree days to remind us that summer is just around the corner. This exhibit provides a comprehensive look at Chanteau Bouguet's broad body of work and his extraordinary talent. We have worked with Chanteau on this exhibit for the past 28 months, so we are really excited to finally open this exhibition. Chanteau is a Navajo master artist whose art practice is reflective of his life and includes references to both everyday life as a modern Diné man and the complexities of his life's journey. We are honored to have his artistry on exhibit and we have the deepest respect for Shanto and for his strong commitment to his art and his Diné community. Before we get started, I want to express our appreciation for all our donors for continually making this exhibitions possible with their generosity. I especially want to thank Mary Hamilton, a long-term trustee of the museum, and Darla and George Cox for their lead gifts for this exhibition. Darla, a former president of the board, is one reason why I became involved with the museum over 16 years ago. They have both given generously of their time and their support for many years and represent the finest tradition of giving to their community. I also want to thank the Wheelwright team for their commitment to producing this exhibition under such challenging conditions. I appreciate each of them for their attention to their craft and their commitment to create exhibits that meet one of the goals of our mission to present the creative expressions of Native American peoples. First, I want to recognize Zachary Miller, Chickasaw, our Andrew W. Mellon Fellow, and the last fellow in our current grant cycle with the Mellon Foundation. We are so grateful for the wonderful support we received from the Andrew Mellon Foundation over the past four years and consider their grant a game changer for the museum in many ways. Zach has been with us for more than two years and is the guest curator for this exhibit. Our chief curator is Andrea Hanley, Navajo, who worked closely with Zachary on this exhibition and provided guidance on the curation process. Ben Calabaza, Kewa, is our public relations manager, graphic designer, and multimedia specialist and is working right now behind the camera where he's the happiest. Nadia Hamid, assistant to the director, performed many of our registrar duties, and George Martinez is our chief of security, facilities manager, and preparator. We also want to thank the contractors who helped complete the installation. Studio photographer Addison Doty and lighting designer Todd Elmer continue to do masterful work for us for every exhibition. Two new contractors stepped in to, to assist us this spring. Drew Miller and Amy Flowers helped with many of the components of the installation with quiet efficiency and great execution. We appreciate everyone's hard work and everyone I just mentioned played an important role to bring this project to fruition. Now to kick off this opening celebration, I am first pleased to introduce you to Seth Damon who is serving his second term as speaker for the 24th Navajo Nation Council, their governing body. Among the communities he represents are Bahali, Chilchilta, Manuelito, Red Rock, Rock Springs, and Sayato. During his first four years on the council, he strongly advocated for capital outlay and tribal infrastructure fund appropriations for the New Mexico chapters. He served as chair of the Budget and Finance Committee for the 23rd Council, directing the development of the $100 million power line and chapter projects, the Permanent Trust Fund, and the C.E. Hassan Fund expenditure plans. Under his guidance, the committee worked to increase the rate of return for the Navajo Nation's investments and sought collaborative relationships with Navajo chapters and small business owners to promote sustainable economic development for the betterment of his people. He also championed the initiative to acquire Aboriginal lands in Colorado successfully, and Navajo Nation now extends into the Centennial State 
as well as Arizona and New Mexico. Among his goals for this year's term are promoting sustainable economic growth, expanding the Navajo Nation's tax base, and developing community infrastructure capacity, which became a nationally visible issue during the challenges of COVID, and which has now gained support from around the state and the country. We are honored to have him here with us tonight, representing the Navajo Nation in support of this important exhibition by a Navajo master artist. Please give a warm welcome to speaker, Seth Damon. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me and I thank you very much for that wonderful, very welcoming introduction. And good evening, everyone. Yat A, uh, thank you for this invite and to the Wheelwright Museum and for extending this opportunity to the Navajo Nation. Uh, my name is uh, Seth Damon and I'm currently the speaker of the Navajo Nation. <laughs> I'm a bit ani, born for an anesthesia touching me though, Ashini, I dish a chain, and say a bit near dish in the And it's a great honor this evening that we come together virtually to celebrate and recognize this iconic work of an artist uh, known around the world, known through many places, uh, Mr. Chanteau Bouguet's work and uh, what he's done in his life's uh, uh, work towards uh, building sustainable goals and building the opportunity for better opportunities and to show young artists how much uh, new opportunities are, are for uh, us, uh, for these up and coming artists going through through this, uh, through this time and our pandemic and these operations. Uh, this exhibit uh, that's curated this evening by Mr. Zachary Miller demonstrates a unique and powerful body of uh, experiences unique to not only the Navajo people, but also to Shanto Begay's life. I've, I know that tonight you'll be uh, introducing him to his many different talents and his many different works, but many times Navajo people have been inspired by Shanto's work of his childhood landscapes, far away times that are still around in some ways uh, today and of histories of trails and a lot of that is taken in by his hardship undertaking together too as well. And uh, we as a Navajo Nation are grateful for this moment now, more than ever, especially coming out of one of the worst uh, uh, tragedies that has hit our people in, the, in a, a long time. And we say thank you to everyone that's here this evening, and I welcome you to this great opportunity. It reminds us of the places and times when uh, you see his artwork and uh, has helped to mold our resiliency and the strength in our people. Uh, when we're here, uh, we are we are. We've been uh, battling numerous different obstacles and we're coming out of this COVID pandemic right now. We are weakened uh, individually, but what the bonds of eh, bring us all back together. And this is just something that shows us that. So this is a type of sharing experience that Art and uh, Shanto's work gives us as Navajo people uh, through, we, through everything. We are the experiences we have in our own ways and experiences they have in your own ways. We're all thankful for these, uh, his artwork, his visual landscapes, help us journey through our times and our histories and past and are here amongst us to enjoy them together. So thank you, Yeah, uh, Shanela, uh, Mr. Shanto Begay for your contributions to our Navajo people and to our culture in this contemporary art. With that, uh, on behalf of the 24th Navajo Nation Council and the entire Navajo Nation, I invite you and every one of you to take uh, part in this moment in this monuments exhibit. So, and, and, and more importantly, in this in this expedition uh, into his life's work. So thank you very much again, uh, most importantly to the Wheelwright Museum for allowing him to express his journey uh, through his whole life's work. So a uh, yeah, and have a great evening and we look forward to this opportunity. Have a good evening, everyone. Speaker Damon, we want to thank you so much for your comments and for your support of this exhibit, Shanta Begay, Eyes of the World. We are so honored by your presence here tonight and you are always welcome. We look forward to following your continued leadership and success on the Navajo Nation Council. And now I would like to introduce you in more detail to Zachary Miller, Chickasaw, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation Fellow, who has produced this exhibition in partnership with Shanta Begay 
and the Wheelwright team over the past several years. Miller obtained his Bachelor's in Fine Arts in Painting and Printmaking from Oklahoma State University in 2015, and his Master's in Fine Art Printmaking from Colorado State University in 2018. His broad interest in visual culture informs his participation in local, national, and international art communities, and in addition to his work at the Wheelwright, he maintains an independent career as a visual artist. Recent accomplishments include the curation of Spatial Flux, contemporary drawing from the Joanne Gonzalez Hickey Collection at the Gregory Alicar Museum in Fort Collins, Colorado, participation in the Atlanta, Georgia Print Biennial, the Wheaton Biennial in Norton, Massachusetts, and Art Now Printmaking in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And his media artworks have been featured in international exhibitions at the CICA Museum in South Korea, Group Global 3000 Gallery, Berlin, and the 2018 Video Poetry Festival in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Zachary's interest in visual culture led him to select Chanteau Begay's work for his fellowship focus. And to say that Zachary became familiar with Chanteau's work and his life would be a gross understatement. He was absolutely committed to researching the artist the man and his work, and in part, the pandemic contributed the ex extra time for that to happen. I would like to introduce Zachary Miller, who will present Chanteau Begay as our guest this evening and spend some time with him in conversation. Zachary? Chok Ma, uh, everyone for being here tonight. And thank you, Jean, for the amazing introductions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Damon, for your kind words about Mr. Begay and the Wheelwright Museum. Uh, I thought I would just give a little more information about Shanta Begay. Um, we know a little bit so far, but uh, I wanted everyone to know that, you know, Begay's professional career began in the early 1980s. And, um, you know, he still continues today to connect viewers to historical and contemporary realities um, seen through Denae eyes. Uh, he's one of 16 children raised on the Navajo Nation. And... Um, through a clan system, he is of the Bitterwater clan and born for the Salt clan. Uh, as many Diné boys are raised, Begay herded sheep growing up in his home in the Cletha Valley, located in Chanto, Arizona. Um, and by all accounts, you know, Begay is definitely a storyteller. Uh, his rich and many times lighthearted Diné perspective and his strong support of environmental issues is not only offered through his paintings, but in his capacity as an author, a poet, illustrator, and his leadership in community projects like youth murals and painting workshops. His work has been shown in many exhibits throughout the years, including at the Museum of Northern Arizona in Flagstaff, the Arizona State Museum, the Utah Museum of Fine Arts, and the Phoenix Art Museum, among others. Uh, he received an Associate of Fine Arts degree at IAIA and a Bachelor of Arts from the California Color College of Arts. Um, and most intriguing to me is his work for over a decade in the 1980s as a National Park Service Ranger at the Grand Teton National Park in, in Wyoming and at the Navajo National Monument in Arizona. Uh, his work's been acquired by the Arizona State Museum, the Booth Museum of Western Art, the Herd, the Institute of American Indian Art, the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art, the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian, and of course the Wheelwright Museum, uh, where I am right now. And behind me, you might be able to see uh, the first painting that really inspired me to want to begin working to create this exhibit with Shanto. Um, Years ago, we commissioned him to do some murals for our amazing library of indigenous material. And when I first got to the museum, I, I was really struck by uh, the power they held. And I almost insisted uh, to Jonathan Batkin, the director at the time, that, that we needed to work with Shanto. So let me welcome everyone and welcome Shanto Begay. Thank you very much, Zach. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for all the wonderful words so far. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. 
Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I also want to welcome everyone and, and thank everyone who came to see this virtual opening. And I, I just wanted to acknowledge that we can't wait to get everyone here in person. Um, here at the Wheelwright, you know, I think we need a bit more time as a country, as a nation, and um, to get that herd immunity and for everyone to be safe. And everyone I know, I'm anticipating the excitement uh, that is soon to come, I think in the summer. Uh, we really hope to get everyone here so that we can all appreciate this amazing artwork together. Um, but for tonight, um, I think let's not be disappointed because there's so much uh, to learn about Shanta Begay and so much to be said. Um, I wanted to start out just by asking you, Shanto, um, you know, how you have grown throughout the pandemic. I know we started working together um, in 2019, and I know you're uh, a very productive artist. You're in your studio all the time. And um, I just wanted to know, you know, so many artists these days are either struggling to make work, but some are almost being hyper productive. How has that affected you? Well, <clears throat> I believe that uh, like anything else where it kind of brings you inward, inside, whatever, you know, I just drew more from the, you know, more introspective in my work. I think it affected that and also the fact that um, there was no time to be socializing out there with my buddies all those hours are replaced by actually working the studio. So the pandemic also has a silver lining in that respect. You know, that it, I, I, get to, I get to spend more time doing what I'm supposed to be doing uh, and do it well. You look well, you look very well. Um, and you're right, you know, I think a lot of us this year have had more time than we've wanted to be introspective. And, and I know um, that all artists, you know, believe that art is a result of life lived. You know, a beautiful life lived creates beautiful art. And um, sometimes I like to say a bad life makes a good song uh, as well. But, you know, I think that in your case, at least from my perspective, you have lived a very beautiful life. And so I think this year, you know, I believe that you still have a lot to, to draw from because you have so much experience. And uh, I mean, you've been all over the place. I think uh, a lot of what I was reflecting on for the show was a movement of artists down the, down the highway, you know, which your work deals with quite well. Um, dealing with hitchhikers and uh, rides in the back of the truck and and uh, things of that nature. So the show has a lot to do with that kind of movement. Um, so that being said, you know, I know I know you're still producing, and I know you have a show opening soon as well with Mr. Mark Sublette at Medicine Man Gallery there in Tucson. Uh, and I'm sure that will be just as beautiful a show as we have here at the Wheelwright. Um, this, uh... Mark Sublette um, was instrumental in, in helping us get this show together and a great resource for us. And I know that you guys work very closely together doing podcasts. I wanted to, to just ask, um, is there anything else you're working on or any, anything people should know about new things happening this year? Well, this year so far, it has been about this, doing shows, doing more children's book illustrations. And so that's been wonderful. And I haven't done that in quite a bit, but I picked it up again during the pandemic. All of a sudden, it just came out again. And I've been working with uh, some very wonderful publishers. That is pretty much what's in the, uh, uh, in the road now. 
And um, down the line a bit later on in the year, I'll be doing a, a book with um, Joy Harjo. Oh, so, fantastic. That's, uh, that's in the plan as well, so. Good luck. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good story. That's amazing news, that's very exciting. It is. And just, um, um, I guess, um, just continue to make, keep, keep my studio, you know, going. That's a, that's a plan. Your studio, I also just want to pause and say that your studio is such an ideal artist studio. You're there overlooking the square in Flagstaff. Um, I know people who would <laughs> do all kinds of things to have a studio like that. So just know I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> it is. Uh, it overlooks the square. And uh, I get, get to be at the, be at the best seat in the house overlooking the downtown drama. Yeah, you deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Been there, so, 14 now. Been there 14 years now. Um, 15 years or so, the longest I've ever been in one place in Flagstaff. Wow. So, it sounds, it sounds better than moving every year. I, I will say mm -hmm. getting rooted into a studio. I think that helps work grow. Um, yeah. I wanted to talk about, uh, the children's book that you mentioned working on and just acknowledge the sheer amount of books that you've contributed to. And I wanted to note that we actually have some of those original illustrations in the show um, that you made for the Navajo Long Walk uh, for the National Geographic edition. And um, they're just beautiful paintings uh, that deal with, you know, a lot of your work deals with difficult issues, but you know, as viewers to this exhibit are leaving the museum, they're kind of forced to reconcile with these three works dealing with that walk home uh, from Fort Sumner and the events that led up to that. And I think that the beauty of these paintings um, provides, or hopefully will provide people uh, with an accessible way to learn about the history of the Diné people and and to experience that through your work um, and, and walk out with a better understanding of that. It is all about, you know, documenting. It's all about having our stories heard visually. So that's pretty much what um, I find a mission to, um, to keep our, to, to, to document a life to document a life within a culture. And uh, kind of reflect on all the um, positive aspects. Of course, uh, there's a lot of darkness in my work as well. So I embrace both worlds in, in, in representing them. I, I definitely believe that, you know, documenting a life is an invaluable thing, uh, especially today as Native people. and especially a, a life uh, as rich as yours growing up uh, the way you did. And, and so we do, we, we do acknowledge many of those difficult issues in the exhibit, but I think you're right, there is a balance. Um, so there's many works that deal with the, with the triumphs and the excitement and the beauty of the landscape, uh, the story of the hero twins, uh, which I also just want to pause and talk about right now as well. Um, the way the way the show is laid out at the museum, the Hero Twins are kind of the seed of the show. Everything revolves around around them and uh, the White Show Woman. Um, and I know that we don't have time to tell the whole story now, but uh, in short, you know, these Hero Twins defeat the monsters of this world so that the people can inhabit and and start to live harmoniously. And I know in the past you talked about fighting monsters in the past and making a statement about continuing to fight the monsters in the present. And that's something that really stuck with me as a curator this year, 
because I, we've all been fighting these monsters that we didn't even know existed in ourselves. Um, um, almost everyone I know has struggled in very dark ways this year. And we, I think, all learned a lot about ourselves. But I wanted to, to just ask you, you know, what are, what are 2021's monsters that we need to be facing in the present? There's so many issues in America right now, and everyone's being divided. But I just wanted to hear from you on that. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> Very obviously, of course, it's, a, it's the, uh, the, the, the pandemic itself. And um, of course, there's a host of other social, environmental. Of course, the biggest uh, monster looming, of course, is the, the whole climate change. You know, with our limited time to turn things around. But um, the Hero Twins, yes. It is uh, always about fighting, fighting, battling the monster. You know, out there, physically, the uh, mining, the mining is one of one of them. The desecration of, of land, the loss of a loss of culture. You know, we have monsters that we are facing today as well. In a metaphorical way, we're also very much battling the monsters that are dwelling within. And I think one of the reasons I paint is totally to work with that. A lot of time, um, you know, I paint because I, paint, I need to. It's like the air I breathe. It's very much, damn. It's very much a, um, um, what, um, what, how I sustain my living, my life, and my hojo, the beauty way. You know, to kind of keep saying, to put it bluntly. So these, these, are, the, these are the battles that we're, we're being waged, that are being waged today. today. A, whole, a whole host of um, problems um, uh, that can be seen as a monster. And of course, in the four worlds uh, that we came from into the fourth world where, where the, uh, the hero twins rid the world of the, um, of the, of the monsters, you know, we are given certain rules, certain sets of life's lessons to live by, to honor the earth, to honor ourselves, to honor everything around us. And of course, um, we have long past desecrating that in this in, in this particular dimension right now. So a lot of people um, see this pole shifting of time as as a great change time. So the time when the monster is is going to be slain. So that's, uh, there is um, quite a bit of uh, monster, monsters out there still. I agree with you. I think, um, I think it's great to hear an optimistic view. You know, I think it's inevitable that, that we'll all fight and, and hopefully win against whichever monster individually or collectively we're facing. Um, and, and I think that, you know, the 10 panels outlaying the story of that really does drive that home. And to me, it's one of the more exciting elements of the show. Um, and so I think, you know, coming out and, and being optimistic and not giving up and fighting the, your monsters and demons is something that I came out the other side of curating the show, always being aware of. Um, they say that, you know, people, mankind, you know, always reveals their true nature during the hardest moments when they're being challenged. And, and so your, I think your work really helped me uh, try to live by that. Um, 
I kind of want to shift the conversation conversation maybe towards a little more lighthearted topic because I watched a film that you starred in uh, several years ago called Monster Slayer. And you play kind of a, a badass kind of character in that movie. <laughs> uh, almost the stoic, very knowledgeable um, figure leading these this young man and woman through this journey. So can you maybe talk about a little about your experience um, filming that movie and then what it felt like to embody that character? Well, when the, uh, when the, um, the whole manuscript was sent to me, you know, it was, it was a wonderful, it, it, it was um, Cabo Woodrow, he's his name, Woody Woodrow Cabo Yazi. And he has a wonderful dossier. He's got uh, crazy events. He was a medicine man. He's a war hero. He's a rodeo champion. Oh my God, he's uh, probably de delegate at some point as well. But um, he had a, a pretty good dossier. But he was the grandfather of the hero twins, it turns out. So he was dispensing you know, knowledge. He was dispensing um, you know, the instruction to slay the monsters and just re retelling, relating stories, explaining the monster's presence. And that's how it came, to be, came, came, it came about. They asked me if I wanted to take that role, I read it and I said, wow, all I gotta do is act naturally. So um, we spent um, a couple of months or so filming out there in, um, near Gallup, Oak Spring, and out by um, Bidahochi, Indian Wells on the reservation. And it was wonderful, you know, working extreme hours, late into the night, early into the morning, coaxing the monster. But uh, I think we did, we did a wonderful job. We had a wonderful crew. All the young actors that I was working with were fantastic, funny. It was a great experience. And of course, since then, I've done another one and I've turned down a couple of roles and another offers. So, hey, I want, to, I, want to, I want to just keep painting. So that's how it came to be. Well, it's always good to have extra opportunities. It's always good to learn when to say no, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. It's, you know, after meeting you and seeing the, the Monster Slayer movie, I was at the edge of my seat the whole time. It was, I had a smile on my face the whole movie because I couldn't believe it. So I highly recommend it. If anyone knows Shanto, go watch the Monster Slayer movie. Yeah. And I can't. And uh, I also just wanted to come back to the show briefly and talk about the main painting that's featured in the exhibit and, and, and you know the reason the show is titled Eyes of the World. Uh, we spoke briefly about this painting numerous times, but I was hoping you could give listeners some insight uh, into what inspired you to create this composition and, and maybe talk about your time being a, a park ranger and your time spent around these places. Well, it is... Uh a view of the eyes on the world, from the, from the place of mystery, from the Anasazi um, ruin, from the Anasazi villages. I placed this um, um, pretty much a, um, it could be in any ruin, but it is. I, I set up my own unconventional reality out there, probably somewhere out in the, the Western Reds, looking out, way out into the, Sacred Peaks, the Flagstaff, the Western Mountain of the uh, of, of, of the of the Circle. We are surrounded by four mountains in the Navajo culture. In the Navajo identity, we have four mount, uh, mountains: the Western, the Eastern Mountain, Blanco, Southern Colorado. A Southern Mountain is Taylor, near Grants. The Western Mountain. Go sleep. 
near Flagstaff. And of course, the Northern Mountain is the Hesperus out by Durango up in Southwest Colorado. These are the four mountains that surround us. And this just represents one of the mountains, the Western Mountain. And the eyes of the world taking in everything within that makes uh, life on that plateau and that world possible. And the water, the vegetation, and of course the whole drama and the sky. The sky itself, of course, has the uh, depiction of the responsibility, the depiction of life being lived. The ancient ones, the spirit are out there hunting, gathering, child rearing, water bearing, elder care. These are the ones that are depicted in the sky. These are the ones that, uh, what the vision, the whole vision, the whole painting embraces. That which the, the human connection, the spirit connection, uh, the land connection, so, and the history, of course. The, uh, the forever monument of the mountain and the prehistoric villages full of stories, both in you know, a point of power, I would say. So this is the view that I wanted to cast out my visions, you know, my visions, to paint my visions out of the place of mystery, out of the place of sacredness, you know, just out of the place, you know, of solitude. So that's what this, that's what this depiction is about. I, I don't think I could have said it better. <laughs> Yeah, it's a that's a beautiful way of putting it, um, and I agree. It's it's an all-encompassing kind of work that, you know, to me personally, when I when I view it, it's a reminder of the fleetingness of life and uh, the responsibility we have to remember uh, as well. So, um, I found it you know, the most appropriate one to highlight for the show. And it's one of your newest works made in 2020. Um, and so uh, everyone who comes and visits the show, you know, that's, this is the context exactly. that I, that I was hoping to, to set. And um, thank you again for, for sharing that with us. Well, one more thing, Zach, if you have time. Sure. I think one of the um, paintings or the, the energy that I gave my work this year was a much more a deeper strokes in my painting that is an earnest cry again to petition the spirits because as I said before, each one of the painting strokes I do, the lines I do, the circle, the curls I do, I see this as a syllable syllables to a word, a word to a sentence, a sentence to a paragraph, and on and on of these great, long, lengthy beauty way prayers. And so these are what um, I, 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 want to, I want to see my work as that, being very conscious of each tap that you put on the surface of the canvas is a, 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 a language, a script to the spirit world. And this year, I feel like, you know, the prayers have been much more earnest because of everything that we collectively are going through. So. That, that is a, that's a profound way and a, and a great insight as an artist into your work, uh, a profound way to think about um, your mark making technique and just the general approach to art making. Uh, I know that you told me many times that art is a healing power and and that art saves lives. And throughout the exhibit, um, you know, that is driven home, I think, from from panel to panel and from work to work. And And I think there couldn't be a better time to have your work at the museum because we all need we all need that energy right now. Um, 
And so I think with that, I'll, I'd like to just thank you so much for engaging with us uh, tonight and working with us over the past two years. Um, so grateful to have gotten to meet you and to know your work and so grateful that you were so hospitable to us uh, in that July of 2019. Um, I think you really changed our lives and, and hopefully all the visitors to the show uh, will have the same experience. It's a life-changing show. And um, I just wanna thank everyone at the museum involved. I wanna thank Diane Rochelle uh, for helping so much with the exhibit, Mark Sublette, all of the private collectors who contributed to the museum, the Museum of Northern Arizona, the Museum of Indian Arts and Culture, uh, and of course, the Andrew Mellon Foundation and um, Mr. Jonathan Batkin, um, Ben Calabasa, and thank you all for, for coming and to this virtual opening and please come see the show once it's safe, once you're vaccinated or otherwise, and uh, be on the lookout. We'll have news about that very soon. So I'd like uh, yeah, any last words from Shanto. Well, from my end, you know, I'd like to thank everybody as well out there that put a lot of work into it. Thank you, Zach. And I'd like to thank you, Dr. my helper, Diane. She is invaluable. Without her, I wouldn't, be blossoming as, as much as I'm, I'm doing now. Thank you very much. Jokuma, thank you. Um, so I believe we have some last remarks from Ms. Jean Higgins. Thank you, Zachary, for the wonderful presentation with Shanto. And I want to personally thank Shanto Begay once again for his participation in this important contemporary exhibition and for joining us tonight. We will have a live celebration later this summer when Shanto and his friends and family can safely participate, and our audience will be able to meet Shanto and participate in some special programming. Please watch for notices about those events in our regular e-newsletters and on our website. And please call us or email us if you want to be added to that email list so you don't miss our next events. This exhibition opens formally tomorrow morning, Saturday, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. as a members-only event. Walk-ins are welcome, but we do expect Saturday to be busy, so we urge you to make a reservation online at www.wheelwright.org. The opening is free to all members, as always, and we have free Wheelwright logo masks for everyone, thanks to the kindness of two of our trustees. We are continuing to successfully practice safe COVID protocols, including required masks and hand sanitizer as you enter, and again, when you enter the Case Trading Post on the lower level, which is the best Native American art gift shop in Santa Fe. We operate under the New Mexico Safe Promise Guidelines. Our regular hours are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And again, we encourage you to make reservations to help keep everyone safe, whether you are a free member or a new visitor to Santa Fe. We wish to again thank all of our donors who do so much to help make our exhibitions possible with their financial support and their enthusiasm. We also want to thank all our members for their steadfast support and especially during our current membership endowment match campaign, which has made a critical difference over the past 10 months. If you haven't already done so, please consider joining as a member of the museum, renewing your current membership or increasing your membership level, each of which includes a dollar for dollar endowment match from a very generous former trustee. I also want to honor the Board of Trustees who successfully raised over $1 million so far in an ongoing campaign to increase our endowment despite the chaos of the pandemic this past year. The museum is especially fortunate to have such great leadership and the museum is stronger in large part due to their guidance and their financial support. We hope you will consider donating to the endowment campaign as it moves into a public phase later this spring. Thank you for your attention tonight. We hope you enjoy the virtual opening and that you will return for future events with us, including Curator Circle events being scheduled with Chanto Begay and other artists in our current exhibits, which will also be announced in our e-newsletters and online. 
We wish you a good evening and a lovely spring, and we invite you to come in and see the newest museum exhibitions real soon. Good night from all of us at the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian.